In this lecture, we are going to design the login page of our real-time chat application. And there, we are also going to create a login form and we are going to read the value from that login form. So let's go to VS Code. And in here, let me close this index.js file of sign up. And let's open the index.js of login. So here we are in the login component. Again, currently from this login component, we are returning this H2 element. But instead of returning this H2 element, we are going to write some JSX here in order to display a login form. And again, in order to save some time, I have already written that JSX. So again, I'll share this JSX with this video. So you can download it and you can copy this JSX. Let me copy it from here. Let's go to our sign up component. And there, let me go ahead and let me paste it. Let's save the changes. And in this login form also, I'm using the same CSS classes which we have used for sign up form. So the login form and sign up form should look almost same. So if you save the changes now, and if you go to the browser, and there, now if we go to login page, this is how the login page will look like. This is the login form. There, we have two input elements, email and password. So here in our chat application, the user is going to log in using his email and password. So this is how the login page will look like. Now from this login page, whenever the user will click on this login button, we want to read the value of the email and password, which the user has entered in this email and password field. For that, let's go back to VS Code. And in this component, again, we are going to create a state. So let me go ahead and let me create a variable there. I'm going to call the state as user. And to update this state, we are going to create a function and I'm going to call it as set user. Let me make this U in caps. So this is our state. This is the variable which is going to store the user state. And this is the function which we are going to use for updating this user state. And in React, in order to create a state, first we need to get this React class from the React library. Okay. And on that, we need to call use state method. So this using this use state, we are creating a state. That state will be assigned to this user and we can update that state using this state updating function. Now here we also need to specify an initial value for this user. So initial value for this user will be an object. And in that object, we are going to have an email property, which will be initially empty. And we are also going to have a password property, which is also going to be empty. So this is the initial value. If you remember when we created the sign up API for that sign up API, let's go to Postman. And here we have the login API. So I was talking about the login API. So for this login API, in order to log in the user in the request body, we are expecting an object. And in that object, we are expecting an email property and password property. And based on that email and password, we are going to log in that user. If that email exists and for that email, if the password is correct, then we are going to log in the user and we are going to return this authentication token. So for the login, we are expecting an object in the request body, which should have email and password field. So that's why here we are creating that object. And initially, when the user has not entered any email and password in the login form, we are going to set its value as empty string. Now, here we have our email input and here we have our password input. So again, just like what we did in our last lecture, here we are going to add a value property. So basically, we are going to assign the value which the user has entered in that email field to this input element. So for that, we are going to say user dot email. Here we are binding this email property of the user object with this value attribute and we are also going to listen to on change event and when this on change event happens what we want is first of all we are going to pass a callback function here this callback function is going to receive the event object which has occurred and using that event object we are going to read the value from the input field 
and we are going to update the user now in order to update the user we are going to use this set user state updating function here we have this set user state updating function which we will use for updating this user object right and to that we are going to pass an object in that object we want to have all the properties of this user object so there we have email and password property so we want to extract those properties and we want to make those properties a property of this object which we are passing to the set user state updating function and for that i'm going to use this spread operator here so we are going to extract all the properties from the user object and then in that user object we are also going to update the email property with the value which the user has entered in the email field so in this input email the user is going to enter some value we want to read that value and assign this to this email property and to read that email value here we have that event object which we are calling as e on that event object we have a target property which will give us the target on which the event has occurred we are listening to on change event on this input element on this email input element so this e dot target here will return us that email input and from there we want to read its value so on this target we can access this value property which will return us the value entered in that email field so in this way we are updating the user object and there we are setting the email property with the value which the user has entered in the email field and we are going to do the same thing for password also so on the password also first we are going to set the value property and here we want to bind this password field with password property of the user object okay and we are also going to listen to on change event and whenever that on change event will happen we are going to set the user object using this set user function there we are going to extract all the properties of that user object with their current value and there we are going to set the password field with the value which the user has entered in the password input because this e dot target here since we are listening to on change event on this password input this e dot target will return us that password input and on that password input we are reading the value of that password input and we are assigning it to this password field okay now again on this form i am going to listen to on submit so whenever the submit event will happen we want to call a function let's call it on form submitted or on form submit you can name this function anything and now let's go ahead and let's create this function and again i'm not calling this function here i'm simply assigning this function to this on submit and whenever the submit event will happen it is internally going to call this on form submit function let's go up and before this return statement let's create that function again this function is going to receive the event object which has occurred and the first thing which we are going to do is we are going to prevent the default behavior of the form when the form is submitted so basically when the form is submitted it reloads the page but we want to avoid that default behavior and to do that on the event object we are going to call prevent default so here we are preventing the default behavior and then what we are going to do is we are going to log the user object later from this function we are going to call our backend api for login let's save the changes here let's go to browser let me open developer console and let's move it to right let's go to console tab let's clear everything here and now let me enter an email and a password and when i click on this login button you can see that it has logged an object where we have the email property with the value which we have entered in the email field and we have a password property with the value which we have entered in the password field later we are going to pass this object as the request body for our login api now what i also want to do here is if you see for this login form 
we have this link which says sign up here so when this link is clicked i want to redirect the user to the sign up page and in the same way if i go to sign up page there we have this link login here so when this link is clicked we want to redirect the user to login page so let's go ahead and let's implement that functionality so currently we are in the login component if i scroll down here we have that message sign up here so what we are going to do is from the react router dom we are going to import this link and l should be cap here okay so we are going to import this link from react router dom and now here instead of using anchor tag we are going to use that link component and here we need to specify two and there we are going to specify the path of sign up page which is slash sign up and let's close that link component let's save the changes here let's see if we have any error so we don't have any error let's go to login page and now when i click on the sign up it should take us to the sign up page let's do the same thing for sign up as well so there also we are going to import this link so let me copy this import statement let's go to index.js of sign up component there let's import that link component from react router dom and let's scroll down and here instead of using anchor tag we are going to use this link component and let's also close that link component and let's specify the path to which we want to redirect the user when this link is clicked so here we want to redirect the user to login page for that the path is slash login let's save the changes let's go back to browser and there if i click on this login here it is taking us to the login page and if i click on this sign up here it is taking us to the sign up page so in this way the sign up and login page of our chat application is ready now all we have to do is from this sign up page whenever the user enter his details and click on this sign up button we want to send a sign up request to our backend application and there it should create that user in the database and it should return us some response in the same way when this login button is clicked instead of logging the user in the developer console we want to send a login request to our backend application and there the login api should run and it should run the logic of logging in the user and it should return us a json web token in the response so that's what we are going to work on in our coming lectures this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day